Math 31, let's review a function notation for just a bit. So when a function is defined with a rule or equation using x and y for the independent and dependent variables, so x is independent, y is dependent, we say y is a function of x to emphasize that y depends on x, which again is why we call y the dependent variable. We pick our x, based on our x we figure out what y is equal to, and we use the notation y equals f of x. So if I say this out loud, it would be y, oops, <laughs> let me use words, y equals f of x. This is not multiplication, this is what we call function notation. So this x is the name of our independent variable, all right? This is the one that we usually pick or are given, okay? This is just the name of our function. We'll use different letters, f of x, g of x, h of x. And then this is the function value, all right? So when we take a look at all of this put together, I think early on in math classes, you're usually given this notation, y equals 3x minus 5. And as we start to progress through higher math, we actually want to use the notation f of x is equal to 3x minus 5. So this symbol collectively is still the y value, but when you write it this way, you, you find out what you plugged in as well as what you got back out. So you can actually write an ordered pair with function notation. So from here on in, we'll be using function notation to, to, uh, well, to work with our functions. So as we do that, let's practice finding the values of some of these functions using that function notation. And again, you've done this for a long time in your math careers, ever since you were taking your first algebra class. You plug an x value in, you get a y value back out. But we're now going to call that an f of x value. All right. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. I'm going to scoot this up. All right. So this says, assume that y is a function of x. All right. Rewrite, ooh, rewrite each equation using function notation. And then we're going to find f of negative 5 and f of b. So when I look at this, I see y, and I see my function of x, right? y is de defined in terms of x. y depends on x, but I'm going to replace that y with the symbol f of x. And the reason I'm doing that is because my first direction says rewrite each equation using function notation. So there, I did it. I used function notation. Now that I have my function, I'm going to find f of negative 5 and f of b. So let's work with the number first. If we have f of negative 5, what that's asking you to do is if, if you'll look in the original function, it's defined to say that whatever is in these parentheses, you substitute it on the right side of the equation here and here. So for this particular example, negative 5 is in my parentheses. So I'm going to do negative 5 quantity squared plus 2 times negative 5 minus 3. All right, and then let's play this out. Now I want to do this using uh, without using a calculator, and then I want to talk about common errors I see with calculators. So we know negative 5 squared is 25. 2 times negative 5, negative 10. If I subtract another 3, I'm going to ultimately have 12. So I see that this is equal to 12. Or another way of writing that is f of 5, excuse me, f of negative 5 is equal to 12. If I were going to graph this pair, this point, and I, I wasn't asked to, but I want you to see it. If I were to graph it, it would be the ordered pair, negative 5, 12. And that's the one of the main advantages for function notations. It, it not only tells me what I get back out, the y value, it tells me what I plugged in. And previously, if this had just said y, I might not have realized that my x coordinate was negative 5. So input, output. All right, now I do want to talk about how you plug in negative 5 squared to your calculator. So we just said we know negative 5 when we square it is positive 25. But I get this all the time and I want to point to it. I see folks putting in negative 5 squared into their calculator and they get negative 25 and they'll say, hey, Mr. A, you know, my calculator is not working. It is, it's just that the, the expression you put into your calculator wasn't the one you really wanted. Your calculator is using PEMDAS, and it's going to do the exponents first, so it's going to take 5 and square it, and 5 squared is 25, and then it's going to multiply that by negative 1 to get negative 25. 
what you really wanted to do was put negative five in parentheses. So not only was the five getting squared, but the negative as well. And that's where the positive 25 comes from. So just be careful when you're plugging in certain expressions into your calculator. All right, I'm gonna scoot this up some more so I can calculate a f of b. All right, that's the next direction we have. So I found f of negative five. Now I need to find f of b. I'm gonna use the same idea. Whatever's in these parentheses gets substituted here and here. So this will be b squared plus two b minus three. So these two function values are my answer. I've found f of negative five and I've found f of b. Let's try that over here. So the first thing I wanna do, if I wanna rewrite each equation using function notation is I, I need to solve for y. I haven't gotten y isolated yet, so let's isolate y. Now I can add eight y cubed to the other side and, and I will, uh, I'll do it that way because I like to have positive lead coefficients. You could subtract the x if you wanted to, but I think you'll give me that eight y cubed has to equal x. I wanna solve for y, so I'm gonna divide both sides by eight. So now I'm looking at y cubed equaling one eighth x, yeah, one eighth x. Now I, I do wanna have a little chat because I think fractions tend to, to mess with us. Some of you might have said, hey, I thought it would have just been x over eight. And that's a correct way of writing it as well. X over eight is the same as one eighth times X, because again, this would have been X over one. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply numerators. So one times X is X, eight times one is eight. So that is fine to write it that way. Or sometimes folks just prefer to write the fraction out in front, the coefficient out in front and put the X there. Either way is fine. I think for where I'm going in this problem, I'm going to leave it as X over eight. I just wanted to make that distinction. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to get y all by itself. Now you can cube root both sides. Because I have y cubed, I would cube root, but just to practice what we had previously done, I'm gonna try a different route. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space so I can write it here. So we had talked about when you have rational exponents, you use reciprocals to solve those equations. And admittedly, I don't have a rational exponent. This is not a fraction but I can still use that idea. I can raise both sides to the reciprocal of three, which would be one third, okay? And then y cubed to the one third is just y, and then I would have x over eight to the one third. So I just want you to see that option. And again, anything raised to the one third is like saying cube root. So ultimately I have y is the cube root of x over eight, or you could write it this way. But if you look at how this is uh, written out, we don't like leaving radicals in a denominator. So I'm gonna distribute this radical or this rational exponent to the numerator and denominator. And I can distribute that exponent because this is division. When there's multiplication or division in the parentheses, you can distribute an exponent or a root. When there's addition or subtraction, you can't. And the reason I wanna do that is because the cube root of eight is two. So ultimately I'm looking at the cube root of x over two, or if you prefer, you could write that as one half times the cube root of x. It doesn't matter which way you write it. But now that I've solved for y, and I know this is taking a lot, ultimately to rewrite this function using function notation, I know f of x is equal to the cube root of x over two. Or again, I could have written one half cube root of x. Now I need to find f of negative five and I need to find f of b, so I'm gonna use a quick little substitution. So f of negative five would be the cube root of negative five over two, and then f of b would be equal to the cube root of b over two. And there's not a whole lot I can do to simplify these. The most I could do is I could take the negative out of the radical. That could come out, but I can't take the cube root of b and I can't take the cube root of five, so again, the most I can do to simplify this is write that this is the negative cube root of five in ratio to two. All right, oops, let me scoot that up just so we can see all of it. And so my answers here are this expression, well, and this function value, these two function values. So negative cube root of five over two and then cube root of b over two. 
Again, I see my input. I put in a negative 5. I got out negative cube root of 5 over 2. I put in b. I got out cube root of b over 2. All right, so with that, we're going to flip the page and we're going to practice this function notation just a little bit more. Oh, and before we do that, just let me read this last box and then we'll go practice function notation. So if I ever want to find an expression for f of x, right, if you have an equation involving x and y, assume that y can be expressed as a function of x. To find an expression for f of x, use the following steps. Solve the equation for y and then replace y with f of x. And that's what we did in both of these cases. In part A, or example A, the equation already was solved for y. In part B, it wasn't, so I used a bunch of algebra. I got y all by itself, and then I just rewrote it with f of x. All right, so now we're going to go to the next page, and we're going to practice some function notation. I'll see you in a few. Bye.